Hello coders, it's time we learn Uniswap B3. This will be a series of videos where I explain how the Uniswap B3 pool contract works. We will go over the code of Uniswap B3 pool contract line by line. However, here are the topics that I will not cover in this video series. So the topics that I will not cover are the factory contract, price oracle, protocol fee, flash swap, NFT, advanced math libraries that are used inside the pool contract, and the callback. In this video, we'll set up the project and then we'll write some code for the constructor. Inside my code editor, I've created a folder called CLAM, Concentrated Liquidity Automated Market Maker. And another folder I've included under Uniswap B3. This contains the Uniswap B3 contracts. Okay, to begin with, I'm gonna initialize a Foundry project inside the folder CLAM. Open my terminal and then type forge in it. Once the project is initialized, the next thing that I'll do is inside the source, I'm going to create a new file called clam.soul. And this will be the file where we will write our own Uniswap B3 pull contract. First, I'm going to declare the headers, the license, and the solidity version that we'll be using. And then I'll create a contract called clam contract clam. Next, I'm going to open the Uniswap B3 pull contract. This is located under uni B3, B3 core, contracts and Uniswap B3 pool dot so. On the top, I'll display the contract that we're working on. And on the bottom, I'll display the Uniswap B3 pool contract. In this video, I'll explain the code for the constructor line by line. So first, I'm going to scroll all the way down and try to find the constructor. Okay, here's the constructor. So inside our contract, I'll declare a constructor. And the first thing that I notice is that it initializes the factory token 0, token 1, fee, and tick spacing. Now, if I scroll up, I can see over here that factory token 0, token 1, fee, and tick spacing are all immutable variables. Inside my contract, I'll declare address public immutable token 0, and then do the same for token 1. We'll ignore the factory contract. We'll also declare fee as an immutable. So un24 public immutable fee. And the last thing that we'll declare is tick spacing. int24 public immutable tick spacing. Now, what are these variables for? Token 0 and token 1 are pretty obvious. They're the tokens that will be locked inside this pool. Fee will be a number that represents some kind of percentage of a fee on swaps. Tick spacing, I'll come back to this later. So let's now work on the constructor. Inside the Uniswap B3 pool contract, I'm gonna go back to the constructor. And inside here, we'll initialize token zero, token one fee and tick spacing. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna omit the code for the factory contract. So instead of getting these parameters from the factory contract, like what it does over here, it gets the parameters from the factory contract. What we're going to do instead is keep it simple and then just pass it from, pass it as a constructor argument. Address underscore token zero, address underscore token one, uint two four fee and int two four take spacing. And then inside the constructor, token zero is equal to token zero from the input, token one from the input, fee from the input and take spacing. Take spacing is equal to underscore tick spacing okay what else do we need to do okay the next step is to set max liquidity per tick at this point we don't know what this variable represents i'll explain this in another video for now we'll just copy this code and then paste it here and i'm going to go to the definition of max liquidity per tick and it is declared as an immutable variable so i'll copy this and then paste it here and now this max liquidity per tick is calling tick spacing to max liquidity per tick. And we have not defined this function and we also have not defined this import. So let's go do that. I'll create a folder called div and inside it, I'm gonna create a new file called tick.soul. And then as usual, I'll paste the headers. And next, let's go to the Uniswap B3 code and take a look at the contract for tick. So I'm going inside a library, looking for a file called tick, put this over here and note that tick is a library and the function that we're going to need is called tick spacing to max liquidity per tick. 
We'll come back to this function later. So for now, I'll just copy the function signatures so that our contract compiles. Library, tick, and then paste the function signature. And then we'll write our code later. To do write code. Okay, going back to our clam contract, we'll need to import the tick library. So I'll say import from div import tick dot so. Okay, let's try compiling our contract. So the only code that we wrote is the constructor. Open my terminal and then type forge build. And our contract compiles. Writing this constructor, we encounter the variable that we don't understand what it is, tick spacing. So in the next video, I'll explain about price, tick, and tick spacing. See you in the next video.